Bugbears are the D&D equivalent of the Boogeyman or the Chupacabra. They're monsters that are used by other races as a way to discourage bad or unsafe behavior. Classic superstitious tales such as If you walk alone in the woods, a bugbear will strangle you. Or If you get too far from the house at night, a bugbear will scoop you up and eat you. These tall tales do have some grounding in truth though, because bugbears do in fact rely on stealth, and they do prefer to move about at night. They do decapitate enemy leaders, but they aren't more prone to eating humans than any other creature. Bugbears also aren't likely to attack lone travelers or lost children, unless they definitely have something to gain out of it. But luckily for everyone concerned, the bugbear's savagery and aggression is offset by how lazy and rare they are. Thank the gods. Bugbears spend most of their time napping or lazing about. They don't craft, farm, or really produce anything of value. Instead, they bully weaker monsters such as goblins to do the work for them so that they can take it easy. Where goblins are the perfect example of a bully, bugbears are the perfect example of that manager that you hate. You know, the one that doesn't do anything but takes all the credit and can't be bothered to do much when you actually do need them. Heck, even if a stronger foe does try to intimidate the bugbear and force them into servitude, the bugbear would rather just escape than be bothered to do any work at all. Even when bugbears get subsumed into a goblinoid host and forced into war, they have to be woken up and practically begged to do anything. Keep in mind that just because bugbears are the supreme lazy guy that doesn't want to do anything on your graded project, these folk tales about them do exist for a reason. They are capable of short periods of intense ferocity, and at their core, they're ambush predators. They're accustomed to long periods of lazing about, which is only broken up by short bursts of murderous violence. Gang life. So when a group of goblins get together, it's called a tribe. What about a group of bugbears? Well, if you said a gang, then you'd be correct. Bugbears are a race that don't exactly produce a ton of offspring, and their overall population is small and spread out. Since a group of bugbears is called a gang, it only makes sense that they act like one. The amount of bugbears in a gang are typically fewer than 12 and consist of siblings and their mates and children, and maybe one or two elders. The gang prefers to live in small enclosures like old bear dens, and they may even make use of other dens in their territory. In good times, the gang is tight-knit and cooperates well when hunting or bullying. But when things go south, it isn't uncommon for the members of a gang to become selfish. They might sabotage each other or even exile weaker or unpopular members to keep the gang strong. Kind of like when a herd will abandon its sick or old, Luckily for bugbears, and not so luckily for other creatures, the bugbear race, young or old, have the capability to survive in the wild on their own. So even exiled bugbears can find themselves with another group that they can be a part of or dominate into submission. On their own though, bugbears have about the same impact on daily life as a wolf pack in the area. It's just that when they do decide to become active, the results are a thing of legends. A Brotherly Pantheon Bugbears predominantly worship two gods that are brothers, Hrugek and Grankul, with Hrugek being the older of the two. The fearsome older sibling is the one that possesses might and prowess in battle, which is where bugbears believe they get their strength and bravery from. The younger god, Grankul is cunning and the bugbears believe that he gifted them their stealth abilities, but at a price. Bugbear legends say that the sibling gods often fight alongside each other and prey upon all that they encounter, since that is the right of a superior warrior. Hrugek takes the heads of those that he kills and puts them on a spike in his den, which is why you may find bugbear dens decorated in a similar fashion. Grankul watches over Hrugek while he sleeps, but if he needs to be somewhere else for the night, he'll whisper sweet nothings to the severed heads and essentially turn them into a warning system and alarm clock 
should any danger approach the elder brother. Since Gronkul always stands watch over his older brother while he sleeps, the bugbears believe that this is where their slothish nature comes from. Since their god can't sleep, the bugbears do it in his stead. The bugbears admire the qualities displayed by both brothers, Hrugek for his physical superiority and skill in battle, and Gronkul for allowing them to use their size and strength as assassins or ambush predators instead of stumbling around like a dumb troll or ogre. Bullying, murder, and battle are all considered holy acts for the bugbear race. Gutting an unsuspecting creature has the same religious meaning to bugbears that metalsmithing has for dwarves. The bugbears do recognize two other gods, one of them being Maglu as the head of their pantheon. The other god is named Skigaret, and that god is to bugbears what bugbears are to others, the boogeyman. This god tends to manifest when bugbears are forced to behave cowardly, such as when a bugbear finds itself in a life-endangering situation. When this god manifests, the bugbear is afflicted by a particular form of madness that will force the bugbear to do anything in order to survive. Even though the bugbear race recognizes a total of four deities, they only like the two sibling gods. So, bugbears are pretty straightforward with not a ton of lore tied to them, but they can be introduced in interesting ways. Since they roam around in small gangs of their own kind, they could be the perfect fit for being some early game bad guys in the form of gang leaders. Maybe the ruthless assassins guild in the city is actually led by a gang of three or four bugbears. Make sure to pay extra attention with introducing bugbears to early level players because a bugbear gang definitely has the ability to TPK the entire group. They have a lot of health for their challenge rating and hit way harder than your players at the same level. Sorry that this episode is a bit on the shorter end and it'll actually probably end up being the shortest one in this particular series. As I've mentioned before, there isn't a lot of lore tied to bugbears. They're a very straightforward creature when it comes to D&D. They hit hard, they're stealthy, and they're kind of like butchers that hide in the forest and scare children at night. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, like, comment, download, and just do all the things. And I hope I see you at the next episode where we'll be talking about hobgoblins.